Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. It is downright overwhelming how many of you have been requesting Voodoo by Godsmack. I have barely tasted the magic of Sully's voice, and I totally believe that he could cast some sort of dark spell, and I think I'd be totally okay with becoming ensorcelled. So let's get to it. I'm not the one who's so far away when I feel the snake bite and tear my veins. Never did I want to be here again. And I don't remember why I came. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. The, that enter, entry of percussion was like so funky and uh, primal. And I really, really, oh, that was awesome. The vocal entry just grabbed me right away. I think it's partly because there's incredible quality in his just fundamental vocal sound, but there's a certain ease in the approach. There's like a it feels almost like he's chanting um, in a monastery, and it feels like it's something that's sort of second nature to him. Like, it doesn't take a ton of effort to create this kind of sound. There's a droning element to it as well. Yeah, definitely feels like the beginning of a spell. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. I'm not the one who's so far away when I feel the snake bite and tear my veins. Never did I want to... There's no pitch correction happening here. It, it, that's really good. That's what creates like these little tiny imperfections in it. I like, I like the way it feels so raw and natural. I'm not the one who's so far away when I feel the snake bite and tear my veins. Never did I want to be here again. And I don't remember why I came. <laughs> oh, he feels so exotic, too. <laughs> Gosh, that groove. Ooh. Candles raise my desire. Why I'm so far away. No more meaning to my life. No more reason to stay. Oh my gosh. This for this Medusa-ish costume is totally the bomb. I, I love it. Um <sighs> this is such a different image of Sully's voice already. And I've, I've got like two versions, right? There's that sort of chanting, droning sound immediately. And then there's this really soft sound that feels like it wants to burst free. But at the same time, it's really drawing in a ton. Whereas last time I was talking about that, that piercing aggression in Sully's sound. This is a totally different window into his voice. And I love it. Ooh, that was a rain stick in the background. Candles raise my I, I gotta say, the butt the belt buckle cracks me up. <laughs> like that is a that's a statement. And right beside a, a tattoo, belly button tattoo. Wow. There's a lot to say. I feel like uh, <laughs> that, that I it's almost hard to focus on a voice when there's a belt buckle belt buckle oh my goodness when there's a belt buckle that is that loud <laughs> Candles raise my desire. great doubling of the voice so far I suddenly feel that there's a lot that he has in common vocally with Surge from System of a Down. 
there's a it has this very authentic kind of sound that feels slightly exotic uh that feels like it could just wail but at the same time there's a way that the sound can hypnotize you bring you in it's it, it is this is voodoo yep yep no more reason to stay Ooh, there's that that raw quality as well where he's not being pitch perfect at all. He's very deliberately, I think, leaning into being a little under or over a pitch at some point. It makes it feel a little a little more primal. You definitely don't want a vocal in this situation, uh, especially with all the instruments that they've chosen. You don't want a vocal to be overproduced. Freezing. love the way he stretches out in the video with the breathing that uh, stretching out your lungs like that your rib cage definitely helps with breath expansion in and another thing that's really useful is when you're singing a big long line you don't want that air to suddenly go whack and get charged out and smack your vocal folds hard that might lead you to crack so if you stretch out this way it can help actually support your entire system and make it so the airflow is not going to suddenly go and like a, a balloon just go on the way out. We're back one more time. Freezing, feeling, breathing, Look at that. Rib expansion! <laughs> that was so scary. <laughs> that was like like uh, like the girl from the ring just popped up a whole bunch of different times. Okay, that was actually really scary for me, guys. Oh my gosh. That was like a whole bunch of snake zombies, I think. Uh, ooh. Sticking with this same primal idea, right? We've got some very deliberate, uh, more uh, acoustic kind of instrumentation in the back. That's so, it's so strange because I, I think of Godsmack, from the little bit of, that I've heard, I think of it as being a very heavy kind of sound, very rock and roll and is going to lean more on amplified sounds and there are there are these crunchy primal sounds in this and to add to that the vocal has a lot of parallel fifths fifth being the interval that's five steps apart right um that kind of parallel fifth movement is associated often with monks singing like we're talking about like hundreds of years ago when monks would sing in parallel fifths like this and we moved away from it as harmony progressed over time, thinking that it didn't have as much consonance to it. Um, but anytime you wanna evoke a more primal kind of mood in your vocal harmonies, if you do parallel fifths, that is one guaranteed way to get there. Well, let's go back there. Oh, God. The 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 There's your parallel fifths. Oh my gosh, this is so creepy. <laughs> Yeah. I feel screamish. Ooh. Hazing clouds rain on my head. Empty thoughts fill my ears. Find my shade by the moonlight. Why my thoughts aren't so clear. Okay. If I'm getting this correct, it seems like Soli and the rest of the band are standing in this field inviting a snake to bite them so that they may die and then be reborn as these like zombie snake creatures. Did I get that right? Let me know. Okay, let me know in that live premiere chat um, because that's like kind of messed up, but at the same time, like feels somewhat entrancing, which 
is very disturbing on its own. I have so many mixed feelings about this. <laughs> He's continuing to do this thing that I've noticed before that it's like a boom, boom. He's doing lots of slides into notes, often taking off from a pitch that's lower until you get to the pitch that the uh, note is actually meant to be at. Uh, again, that kind of comes back to this sort of chanting, droning feeling, but that sounds like it's just something that he's developed into his overall vocal style. I gotta say, if this was classical music, he would get in so much trouble for using that over and over and over, but thank goodness it isn't classical because it's such a cool and I, it feels like a definitive way to create his signature sound. <laughs> Let's go back one more time. Hazing clouds rain on my head. My empty empty again. My ears. Find my shade by the moonlight. Why my thoughts are Anytime he sings, he sounds like he's really hooked into his breath. It's uh, this feeling, all like we'll use a snake for example, it feels like there's this endless snake that's being drawn up out of his diaphragm and even below there, right? Where all of those extra breath support muscles are. And it feels like there's this very slow drawing out of a snake that's a singing voice. It's just... Uh, so connected. <laughs> like right there, very connected. So into swords. Just, just side note. I, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I wanted to add some descriptions to Sully's voice before when I when I first read about it. Everything just said powerful, powerful, powerful. I'm like, well, what does powerful really mean? And so the first time that I listened to Godsmack, I got into what I think it was, and it was this very. It was like a very piercing aggression and it had this sharp gravel, I think is the words I ended up on. This, uh, this is almost sultry at times. Uh, and I would even go as far as to say serpentine, right? Maybe that's just because I'm hearing lots of lyrics about snakes, but there is a certain sort of slithery nature in his voice, especially when we start putting those parallel fifths side by side. It's like, whoa. So you got some serpentine, sultry, right? He's like Medusa, but a dude. And I, I'm going to keep working on some of these. And sourceling, there's so much about this that it... I would never have thought he was capable of initially. Evocative as well, Ooh, evocative. Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep going with these words. Please, please help me out as well. Give me all of your descriptors of his voice. It's such a good groove. <laughs> I love the emptiness and the space. Oh, uh, the like the background, the very quiet vocal layers, layers that were built in there were so delicious and uh, there. Oh my gosh, they give me tingles. 
Okay, we're gonna go back with those one more time. Ooh, maybe a few more times. So I paused here previously uh, saying I like the space between. There's a lot of space that's left to add more layers in and I think that's so purposeful because we're about to get some of those kind of crazy extra sounds built into this. And if they hadn't originally left this space, I don't think they would have had as much of effect as they did. There. So that's just breathing that has some extra production layered on top of it that sounds like sounds like it's sizzling. And there's then he has just like a, a kind of a fry kind of vocal sound that's being done there, almost like he's the breathing with that production almost sounds like a little snakeish as well, and maybe he's waking up from something with that kind of fry sound, morning voice. Guys. And tons of production on that too, but kept it back. Okay, so I'd said before that with this kind of song and vocal that you don't want a lot of production. And that is absolutely true, I think, on your lead vocal line. But when you have an instrumental break like this, kind of like a bridge, it, you're allowed to explore more. The sound can develop in different directions. And since these vocals are really far back in the mix, they're not, they're not our lead here, it, it is actually delightful to get that little bit of extra production to make that sound just a little bit weird, sound like it's drawing us almost into another dimension there. Ooh, that's I really love the production choices here. <laughs> Melts. <laughs> There, whoa, that's such a cool hat and image and the fog and the organ. Oh my gosh, I love this image. Holy crap. Wow, evocative everywhere. Um, that that uh, sort of more guttural kind of singing we just heard, I loved that gravel that Sully brought in there just for a little bit. <laughs> One more time. This is delightful. <laughs> Yeah, there's that sharp gravel in the sound and the echo on it. <laughs> that's that's fascinating. It feels like it's actually the band that is casting this army of snake zombies. Oh, okay. Um, more and more that I get into these lyrics and hear how they're using them, it it feels like from the music video that it was inviting this transformation to take place. But from the lyrics, it's it's almost like this person is already on the journey and going somewhere. I like the way that we've had uh, that we've had the music video to take us through how it might have occurred, but the music itself almost lets us just sort of dwell in this altered state. It's just, it is, it is freaking magical, you guys. It's magical. <laughs> Oh, 
this, gosh, this, uh, this scene. I'm trying to figure out what it reminds me of. That actress too. So with the, it almost looks like there's a tartan, so this feels like it's in Scotland. There's even a Celtic knot there, but uh, the rest of the video hasn't necessarily felt like it was there. So maybe it's sort of hearkening. I wonder if there's some sort of stone hinge kind of vibe they're also trying to bring in here. So it's like general British Isles perhaps, uh, but there's some character from a movie. I can't figure out who it is. Maybe it was in a Harry Potter thing. This this woman reminds me of this uh, like witch kind of character, but then you've got all of these things that could be um, just from a period piece, essentially. Ah, such a cool imagery to add as another layer to the music video. Are they are they the ones that's sending forth this crazy army? And you know, maybe God's back is just playing for the the snake zombies as they go forth and attack. I don't know, but. Everything here is so evocative that I want to create this story in my head of what's actually happening or how it came to be. And it, it makes me really excited to want to create along with a band like this. And I don't Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what a cool ending. And it, it seems like, it, I feel like the woman here is the one that might be possessing solely, potentially, but I'm not, I'm really not sure. And it also feels like he's saying it, everything that I'm not the one that's so far away. It feels like he's definitely inviting this possession to happen, um, but then taking absolutely no responsibility for it one more time. <laughs> I like really get your comments now. What an incredible experience in a song and what an entirely different view of Soli's vocals. And I, I it's spine tingling. It is mesmerizing. It's hypnotizing. All of the words that give you this idea that you've been put under a spell, that all of those apply to voodoo. Oh my gosh. This is this is such a great example of how music is magic. And if you want to see some more magic that I think music has cast in the form of a song, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.